welcome to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's only local morning show, giving you exclusive access into people, businesses, and events in our community. We're bringing you this show live daily weekdays at 9.30 a.m. with your host, me, Maddie Mushin. Before we dive into today's show, every week we highlight someone, an educator, student, business, or organization from our Greater West Bloomfield community going above and beyond. If you'd like to submit an entry for someone, you can scan the QR code on the screen and fill out the Google form with the person's name, their contact information, and reasons why you think they should be recognized here on the Splash Live for our person of the week. Now let's go check out what's going on in our Greater West Bloomfield community. The first event we want to look at are the West Bloomfield Township Public Library virtual events. The West Bloomfield Township Public Library are hosting a ton of fun and educational events for residents in West Bloomfield and all age groups. Today they have their adult program where they'll be discussing the Great Michigan Reads. At this event at 7 p.m., they'll be joined by Philindia Professor Hilary Joy Ventrine to discuss life in the copper country and how the copper strike of 1913 impacted the lives of residents during World War I. For these events and all other virtual events happening at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library, you can go ahead and register for these events on their website at westbloomfieldlibrary.org. Something else that is ongoing at the library is your ability to rent out those great literacy and tender topic kits to help your child with their literacy skills and ways to learn about tough topics that are happening in our community. If you're interested in renting out one of these kits, you can do so by stopping into the library or calling the youth services desk to reserve the kit of your choice. The next event we want to look at is the Sylvan Lake History Talk. You can join Sylvan Lake historian Helen Jane Peters on Thursday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Sylvan Lake Community Center to learn more about the history of the Sylvan Lake community. All Sylvan Lake residents are welcome and there will be snacks and beverages provided as you learn more about the prettiest little city in Michigan. Helen Jane will walk the group through the history of how Sylvan Lake started, where the land was bought from, and so much more. So make sure if you have any questions for her, you bring those and she will answer those at the end of the presentation. The last event we want to look at is the Sylvan Lake Swap and Sale. If you're looking to either sell or donate your outgrown or unwanted outdoor items, Sylvan Lake is hosting their first annual Sylvan Summer Swap and Sale on May 1st from 11 to 4 p.m. Here you can bring your items such as kayaks, beach games, lake gear, and other summer related items to either donate, sell, or swap with one of your Sylvan Lake neighbors. Check in for all the items will start at 8 a.m. and go to 10 a.m. And the actual sale and swapping of items will begin at 11 a.m. If you have any questions about this event, you can contact Missy Markham at 248-480-6080. If you have an event you would like us to feature here on the Splash Live, you can send us a message on our social media pages at Civic Center TV and on Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. Coming up, I'll be talking with Andrew Murray, the GIS Administrator for the West Bloomfield Township. But before that, throughout the school district, there are amazing teachers making an impact on the students that they teach here in Greater West Bloomfield. I got to sit down with Carol Wild, a kindergarten teacher at Gretchko Elementary, who was nominated for the 2022 Oakland County Outstanding Teacher of the Year Award, and ask her about that nomination and what the school district means to her. Let's go check it out now. The West Bloomfield School District has a ton of exceptional teachers that should be recognized for the work that they're doing inside the classroom. Carol Wild, a kindergarten teacher at Gretchko Elementary, got nominated for the 2022 Oakland County Outstanding Teacher of the Year Award, and we got to sit down with her and ask her what this nomination meant to her. Well, I was very uh, surprised when I was told um, a few weeks ago by my principal, Mrs. Sally Drummond, that she had nominated me for the Oakland County Outstanding Teacher of the Year for 2022. I was really surprised. Um, I was really grateful and I thought, you know, I've been in the district for 23 years now and um, I really feel like that nomination is not just me. I feel like it is all of my colleagues as well. We are all together as a team, wanting what's best for students. We help each other in every way. We support each other. To me, that nomination, for as happy as I am, and I'm so grateful and thank you, and love being recognized for working hard, it does, in my heart, go to all of my colleagues here at Gretschko. I had a degree in communications and I worked in retail and so 
When I decided to go back to school to be a teacher and when I graduated, I was 29 years old. So it was really a second career choice for me. You know, I think that I found my calling when I did decide to be a teacher. This is my 23rd year. I have only worked in West Bloomfield schools. I've never worked in any other district. I've never, I never substituted. Um, the student body, a lot of it has changed over the last 23 years. But the one thing that I can say about West Bloomfield is the support that I've gotten over the last 23 years, the challenges that have been you know, brought to me, and um, people believing in me that I can you know, do things that are hard, um, I feel that has been one of the best experiences working in West Bloomfield because I have so much support from parents. The students are wonderful. The administration has been amazing to me, so I wouldn't want to work anywhere else. I'm honored to have been nominated for the Oakland County 2022 Outstanding Teacher of the Year, and I hope that next year and into the future that I'm able to take what I've learned and what has gotten me to, to receive that nomination and spread it among new educators coming in. Congratulations to Carol Wilde for the nomination of the 2022 Oakland County Outstanding Teacher of the Year Award. And thank you for all that you do to impact the lives of our students in the West Bloomfield School District. Reporting for the Splash Live, I'm Maddie Mustin. Congratulations to Carol on the nomination and thank you for sharing your passion with teaching with your students and future educators down the road. Later on, we'll be taking a look at what our four community leaders had to say about housing and development projects happening this year in our greater West Bloomfield community. But before that, I will be talking with Andrew Murray, the GIS Administrator for the West Bloomfield Township. All that and more after this short break. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. In the face of COVID-19, Staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective. And with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov slash flu. Can I ask you a question? Uh why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. And now, back to The Splash Live. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mustin. Joining us now to talk about his role in the West Bloomfield Township is Andrew Murray, the GIS Administrator at Town Hall. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, it's great to be here. So Andrew, for our viewers who are unfamiliar with your role, could you give us some insight into what you do as a GIS Administrator in the township? Yeah, so um, GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. Um, it's kind of a, a wordy description that basically means I work with maps and geographic data. So um, if you're know, familiar with like Google Maps or Apple Maps, um, that's kind of the same things that I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis, just in a different format. And Andrew, can you tell us a little bit of your background and how you got um, into your position as a GIS administrator and specifically here in the West Bluefield Township? Yeah, so um, I went back in college, went to um, Michigan State and got my degree in environmental geosciences, so kind of a mix of geology and geography. And then from there, um, I realized that I really like the geography aspect of it more. And with that, um, was able to get a job basically doing field work out with the GPS unit, like the one you see behind me on my right. And um, from there, I was able to get a job in the private sector. And eventually, when I found out that there was an opening at West Bloomfield, um, 
I had some interactions with the township in the past, and I just know the people here are fantastic to work with on a day-to-day -day basis, and was lucky enough to get the job here. So worked out pretty well. And can you give us a little bit of insight into some of your responsibilities and your day-to-day -day tasks that you do um, specifically at Town Hall here in West Bloomfield? Yeah, so on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I do make a fair number of maps for people on kind of an as-needed basis. And then there's also kind of the ongoing task of making sure the data we have is in a good quality and good manner. And um, that involves a lot of review, kind of digging deep. Um, I know one analogy I've heard from some of my coworkers here is I'm like a, a treasure hunter. I'm always trying to dig around, look for things and find certain data or maps or plans from who knows how old it could be 20 30 40 years old and andrew for these maps and the certain responsibilities that you do how are these impacting the west bloomville residents that you help out with at town hall so um with that basically the data that i'm working with and the maps that i'm producing directly impact the citizens in terms of being able to see and have information at their fingertips um, one of the processes I'm working on right now is updating the maps on the township website to be more um, accessible to users and also be interactive rather than just kind of static old paper maps. Um, they'll be able to use it basically like Google and zoom in and zoom out and click on things and have information pop up on the fly. So um, moving forward and having some progress with that. And for the West Bloomfield residents, um, what types of things do these do the residents use these maps for? And what certain things um, do you get calls about or questions about from the West Bloomfield residents? So in terms of um, the maps online, currently I think we have around 20 to 25 maps online. Um, that can be things like um, voting precincts, um, your, they, your garbage being picked up, um, environmental protection areas such as woodlands and wetlands. Um, areas that the uh, fire department will respond to. Um, it's a fair number of things. And uh, in terms of accessibility moving forward for the residents, um, basically it'll just be a, an easier method of access moving forward. And then Andrew, can you give us um, some in-depth detail into the research and the preparation it takes to make these maps and specifically for the West Bloomfield Township. We have a big township making sure that you're getting all of the up-to-date details for those maps for our residents. Yeah, so that involves a fair bit of interaction with other departments, um, kind of back and forth, making sure that all of the data we have is current and the best possible data moving forward. So I can usually have a first draft of a map with the data that I've been provided go and talk with maybe someone working in say the assessing department or the clerk's department or maybe code enforcement or water and sewer and say hey here's the first draft let's take a look at it maybe sit down and discuss it see if there anything does need to be changed or hey maybe there's one little problem area maybe the northeast corner or something like that you'll have a little back and forth and then i'll say okay maybe i'll have to look into things a little more and have a little more back and forth. Hey, here's the updated map with the info that you provided. And then that'll be updated and basically pushed out for greater use with that throughout the township. And Andrew, is there anything specific that you want our viewers and the West Bloomfield residents to know about those maps and then where they will be online and how they can access those? Yeah, so um, basically moving forward, those maps online will be um, It'll be in the same spot. You'll just look up um, basically West Bloomfield Maps or GIS, either of those terms. And there'll be kind of an interface where you can go through and pull up all that info you want on the fly. And um, it should be a fairly seamless user experience moving forward. And then Andrew, as we wrap up, are there any um, specific things that the West Bloomfield residents need to know about um, either giving you information or if they have any questions and con uh, comments, how they can contact you at Town Hall. Um, so in terms of need to know information, um, our, the GIS department is growing here. So we will be moving forward with additional maps and additional applications online. And then moving forward for in terms of contact information, um, my contact information is on the township website. So they can feel free to reach out to me there either through phone or email. 
Awesome. Well, Andrew, it was a pleasure talking to you uh, this morning. Thank you so much for giving us all that information on the great um, programs and services that you guys are providing there in the GIS department at Town Hall. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Once again, I was joined by Andrew Murray, the GIS administrator at Town Hall, telling us how we can access those maps that he's producing on the website. And if you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to them on the West Bloomfield Township website. For the past four years, we have been bringing together the four leaders in Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield to discuss some of the topics that are impacting our community. For the fourth annual State of the Communities Address, I talked to the leaders about the upcoming housing and development projects that are happening this year. Let's go check out what they had to say. This year, for the fourth annual State of the Communities Address, I talked to the four leaders in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield about topics that are impacting our greater West Bloomfield community. Let's go see what they had to say about housing and development in our area. And after that, we went ahead and engaged them to develop a, a plan for our Cast Lake Road corridor. You know, our planning commissions worked very hard over the last couple of decades trying to make changes, but nothing seemed to gain traction. So we turned to the Gibbs group and our TIFA uh, paid for that. And they came back with some uh, very great plans, which uh, we knew that the only way that you can make something like that come to fruition is to get a buy-in from the community. Uh, we are nearing the completion of our master plan, as you mentioned. Uh, it's a revision. I encourage all residents uh, to get involved. Um, we need feedback uh, and we need, if, if you're a potential business, uh, to keep an eye on the progress that we have going on. Um, the updates are linked in our city website, silvanlake.org. Uh, the best time to get involved is before the plan is complete. Um, last year, we welcomed Sylvan the Sylvan Table to Sylvan Lake, their farm-to-table restaurant with three large greenhouses supplying fr fresh vegetables and their ever-rotating menu. Uh, the progressive approach to dining has been incredibly successful. As everybody knows, West Bluefield is a bedroom neighborhood community. We don't have any industry. Our businesses are mainly restaurants and office buildings and plazas. We've had numerous subdivisions constructed in the last two years or are under construction. And we conducted a housing study a year and a half ago. And that housing study told us that we were saturated with senior citizen facilities. I should talk as I'm reaching that age. And we need more density. We need more apartments. We need more clustered homes. And we followed that. Now we have one of the best planning directors in the state. Her name is Amy Neary. And I know you've interviewed her. So she, she deserves a lion's share of the credit here. We have not started Started construction yet, but we're in the process of finalizing all the architectural plans. Our citizens overwhelmingly approved a bond issue last November to pay for these improvements. It's been a long time since about 1985 since we built anything on the campus, and really the police facilities were very obsolete and uh, did not meet the current safety needs and our DPW facility was not able to handle the kind of maintenance that we need to do. So that's all being redone and uh, we're hoping to get started very soon. It's gonna take about a year, we hope. For more information on other topics that are impacting our community, you can watch the entire fourth annual State of the Communities Address on our website at civiccentertv.com or on our on-demand YouTube page. Reporting for The Splash Live, I'm Maddie Muschin. To watch the entire fourth annual State of the Communities Address and to hear more information about the COVID-19 pandemic, infrastructure, and more, you can head over to our website at civiccentertv.com or our YouTube page at Civic Center TV to stay up to date on all the topics that we talked about. We're going to take a short break here on The Slash Live, but when we get back, we'll be talking to two very talented students in the West Bloomfield High School Digital Media Arts class. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Xander and Raven after this break. We'll be right back with The Splash Live.
When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. And now, back to The Splash Live. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mushin. Joining us now to talk about their award-winning work in the Digital Media Arts program at West Bloom High School is Xander Woods and Raven Black. Thank you both so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. So Raven, let's start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about when you started in the Digital Media Arts class at West Bloomfield High School and what has been like working in the program? Um, well, I have been with my teacher, Miss Williamson, since my freshman year, but this is my um, first time actually being in one of her classes. So I have always been kind of familiar with the uh, with the class. And we, what we do is we learn how to use specific software. We learn different um, things in the field that we uh, that you might be able to do um, regarding like reporting and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I just got with her this semester, um, but I mean, sorry, this year, but it has been pretty informational. And then you guys just both um, competed and put your stories into the MAB Awards. Raven, you took first place in the current events story about Britney Spears and her conservatorship. Can you tell us a little bit about that story, what it was like to do the research, put these story together, and then a little bit about winning that grand prize in first place? Um, well, the assignment was basically to create uh, a, a story based on like the curriculum that we had been learning for journalism. And we had uh, multiple different things to help us learn about the journalism like unit. But the specific one that I did was just trying to find something current, something that was uh, happening. And at the time, Britney Spears' conservatorship was uh, kind of uh, hot news, I guess you could say. And um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what was going on with the um, with the conservatorship and it was a little bit difficult to find credible sources that was probably one of my biggest struggles is to find uh, was to find credible sources that I could use to like make it seem like I knew what I was talking about at least and um, yeah, I think that's the biggest struggle, but I definitely did have a good time doing it. And um, ha getting the grand prize was not something that I expected to get, but at the same time, um, Miss Williamson has been, uh, which is my teacher, she's been very um, like supportive of me and like my um, stage voice, I guess you could say, so. And Xander, I have worked with you during the football games at West Bloomfield High School this past fall, which was a ton of fun. We had a great time. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what drew you into the digital media arts program at the high school and specifically what it's been like this semester? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, Maddie. Um, but what really drew me in, it's funny because I never even knew about digital media arts. I was aware of it, but I didn't actually know necessarily the skills behind it that it took to actually be pretty good or actually about this career at all. So when I took the class, it was a little intimidating, I'll be honest, when you know it started because I wasn't I'm not really good with software and technology. But then as you know the course came on, it was a lot of fun and Miss Williamson is a really good teacher and she kind of gave me a whole new perspective on what this industry and what the actual work it takes. So I'm really appreciative of her you know, just to give me this uh, broadened horizon and perspective of this actual uh, career. And then Xander, you've submitted um, your 
program and your um, video about the sports reporting at the Laker football game last fall that won second place. Can you tell us a little bit about what exactly you submitted and that experience winning second place for that reporting? So the piece that I submitted was an interview with Coach Grice after their playoff win. And I believe they took home the district championship in that game. And really that whole process of creating the interview, it was pretty crazy because I'm doing it live as the game is going on. So I'm trying to think of the best storylines. What are the key moments of the game and specific, you know, maybe stats or a little information nuggets that I want to add into my interview just to get the best uh, answers and the best quality responses. And that whole process, you know, being up in the booth with you guys and you and Tyler, it was really fun, you know, because that's a dream of mine. That's something that I really want to advance in my career, especially in sports broadcast and journalism. And just winning the award, um, I'll be honest, I didn't even know it was going to be submitted. That it was pretty funny. And then Miss Williamson, she texted me on Remind saying, I got second place. I'm like, second place for what? And then she said, um, that interview piece. So I was really, I was really elated. And I didn't even know that it would actually get that high of an achievement. So I'm pretty proud of myself. And then Raven, as you are looking to graduate, um, are you looking to continue your work with the digital media arts after high school? Is that something that you're interested in going forward? Well, I've always been interested in the techno technolo te sorry, technological field, but I, um, I've not really been specifically towards this. I've been more towards the computer software, computer programming, but I have found this really interesting and kind of fun, and I do like using the software, so it could be a possibility. And then Xander, um, as you are a junior, obviously sports broadcasting is something that you're interested in um, going into next year at the high school and looking forward, um, what are your plans and do you want to continue with the digital, digital media arts um, and sports broadcasting? Um, so my plan moving forward is just, you know, keep working on my craft, you know, maybe just to practice, you know, watch a game and then get my thoughts or insights of it, some key details or stats and maybe continue to network as you know i've been meeting with a lot of people that have gone pretty far in the sports industry you know i've met a couple of mentors and people that i kind of want to model my career after and then throughout the digital media arts portion you know i just want to continue with the program and just you know keep getting as good and getting familiar with the software and the technology so i'm not just one dimensional where i can talk about sports i can maybe edit my own show or maybe a podcast or maybe do radio just to be able to you know, advance my soft skills, as you will. So those are some of my plans for the future. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you guys, and good luck with the rest of your careers. It's going to be very bright, as I'm sure. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Once again, I was joined by two very talented digital media arts students at West Bloomfield High School, Xander Woods and Raven Black, talking about their award-winning pieces for the MAB program. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you again to Andrew Murray, Sander Woods, and Raven Black for joining us on the show. A special thanks to our Zoom producer, Jared Clark, for coordinating the Zoom and making sure our guest joined us. And as always, a huge thank you to Calvin Brown, our board operator and director, for making the show possible each and every morning. And thank you for joining me as we explored all of the people and events in our greater West Bloomfield community. As always, you can make sure to tune in live on Civic Center TV, on Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Channel 99, Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. to catch up on what's going on in our greater West Bloomfield community. You can also watch our show every morning on My Michigan TV. It's a new streaming service that covers all of the great people and events happening around Michigan. You can either head over to MyMyTV.com or download the free My Michigan TV app on your smartphone or smart TV. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kiko Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you for watching The Splash Live.